Oh. Hey friends, welcome to this week's video. I will preface that saying <laughs> that it's super hot here in Boston. Uh, we're going through a little bit of a heat wave and things are pretty bright and hot. So this setup is a little bit harder to set up than I thought. Usually I do these sort of comparison videos where I got this like bay windows just so I get a lot of natural light. Except there's so much light coming in that I actually have to use a, you know, ND filter to sort of black this out a little bit. So if things look a little bit weird, I'm just trying to figure this all out. But on top of that, as I'm shooting all this sort of stuff, I'm realizing how much I use lights and how I usually shoot this stuff with no air conditioning on so that you guys don't hear that sort of feedback. So as a result, I'm sweating and dying very slowly, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to do this so we get this video out. But uh, if you see me sweating and stuff like that, please bear with me. I'm just in very unideal situations for shooting right now, but uh, hopefully it comes out all right. Anyway. If you guys weren't with us for the past couple of weeks, we went over the Bowers and Wilkins PI7s and the Master and Dynamics uh, MW08 Sports. There we go. We also did their little brothers so the PI5s and the non-sport version of the MW08s. Um, but that was in the previous review. The reason why I'm not comparing these head to head because these are more in the same price range at $350 and $400. So it's a little bit more apples to apples comparison. So I thought it was a little bit more fair. These also have the like the latest features or like the most flagship features of all of the offerings from each brand. So I think it's more fair comparison. And yeah, let's get started. In terms of the case, PI7s, slim this way, fat and stubby that way. So it fits in your fifth pocket. It's pretty cool actually, because you can just slip in there and then you can just access your, back, your, your buds by flipping it open. Depending on how wide your pocket, you can do the same thing, but usually I slip it in this way. Um, again, they're both very, very small, but the big difference is this has 30 hours. This has 18 hours. Yeah, it's it's a struggle. So the PI7s have that kind of cool Bluetooth 3 transmission feature um, that makes it kind of a differentiator and something I don't think anything else has in the market. So that is the big differentiator with this case. Um, I, thought, I found it really cool because obviously, as you saw in the previous review, we could play Switch with it. We could probably use this in uh, in-flight entertainment, things like that. Um, and you can wirelessly charge, I believe. Um, but yeah, so I think that it has a lot of cool party tricks. But from just the baseline of it, it has abysmal battery. From the MW08 Sports perspective, it's very much the same sort of form factor. The only thing is that they've improved is that it's no longer very, very chromy and you don't have to worry about smudges because now it has this sort of matte finish on it. That matte finish is actually very nice in feel. The only thing I don't really like is this sort of Kevlar fiber woven design. It does make it stronger. So I know a lot of people were complaining about the fact that that chrome got scratched up. If you dropped it, it would get dented. This shouldn't have the same issues because it should be stronger. But I just have personal, I have personal beef with um, carbon fiber looking things. Just because like I think in high school, a lot of people fronted it and it looked very cheap. It was on their phones, it was on their bumpers, it was on their cars. But you know, they never, they, you couldn't afford that stuff in high school. And then even if you could, you, you, did, you put it on something stupid like a muffler, you know? Like, you, it was, that's why I just have a sort of cringe every time I see carbon fiber. But, you know, overall, it's a better case. It has better indicators in terms of battery. So you can see both the battery and each earbud. This one is just kind of uh, that one indicator up front. So overall, I think that the case is better performed here. Oh, also, a lot of you people were annoyed that this didn't have wireless charging in the MW08s. Uh, but now they do in the sport. So you can wirelessly charge this guy. So these are basically the same features outside of retransmission. So if you really need that right retransmission, this is a better case. But overall package for what you would need in terms of durability, longevity, etc. This guy. So MW0, it's win in the case fronts. Um, in terms of the earbuds themselves. Boop. Boop. I was actually going to say that they're pretty tied. Because I actually kind of like how these gold things feel. Um, but... I'm gonna give it probably to the MW08s and I'll tell you why. So these ones fit really nicely in ear and they're sleek, you know, they don't really stick out at all. Um, and the improvement of the um, ear tips 
Sorry, sorry, playing music. Um, it's super sleek. Like it's just flat on your head. People don't really know that you have it in, and it's a little bit nicer to look at from the side as well. Um, that sapphire crystal obviously will make it scratch proof, but it also just gives it a nice little glossy feel that makes it look classy. Um, so. Um, again, they come in a bunch of different colors. The green ones are super dope. So if you're looking at one and you're kind of in between, you like that green, get the green. Um, but yeah, I think overall the aesthetic's great. Um, and they did a really good job about making, keeping it classy. For this one, I really thought that the, M, the sorry, <laughs> the PI7s were just as nice looking. Um, they fit pretty nicely. I, I think over time, that actually was more comfortable in a longer listening session, but this one, you know, out of the gate, these ones fit in pretty nicely. Um, but someone mentioned this in the comments and now I can't see it. So like overall to me, this looks like not very, you know, sway it, it's all close to head. And then it just has these two plugs where the, with the uh, touch control slip. But someone said that these make you look like Frankenstein <laughs> because of the plugs. And now I can't unsee it. So now I'm like looking at myself and I'm just like, wow, it actually kind of does. And it kind of ruined it for me. I'm not going to lie. I was like, oh, black and gold. This thing is dope looking. Put it in the ears. It feels awesome. And then that dude dropped the comment and I'm like, wow. All that out the window. <laughs> All out the window. Oh, man. I mean, it did help me make a better decision on this. Uh, it, it did help me like you know, make my stake in the ground on this. But that one comment just blew my mind and now I can't unsee it. So I see some people on the streets and the first thing that comes to mind is Frankenstein. So from the earbuds perspective, in the looks category, I'm gonna give it to the MW08 Sports. And again, that green is beautiful. But in terms of controls and things like that, they're kind of equal. So in terms of tactile and responsiveness, I would give it to the MW08s because they are actual buttons. And with the introduction of those foam tips, they actually made them more tactile and they don't come out of your ear like they did on the MW08s. Um, but on these ones, you have touch controls and the PI5s had trash ones. These ones are a little bit better in terms of response, but I am more used to it now. So I know that there's a little bit of lag. I know how fast my taps need to be to make them register. But I think just for like the new user or just in general, when you compare it to other headphones, that tap response is a little bit subpar and i would also say that um what do you call it because they don't do affirmation tones for each tap it's not like tap tap and you know that it's the next one um it's just it just waits until the 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 command is in and then affirms after the fact so if i did one tap it's the same tone as if i did two taps you know so it's a little bit confusing and especially when you're just trying to figure it out on the go sometimes you don't know which one it registered. If you did a double tap, did it only register the first one or is it the second one you have to figure out after it actually executes it. Um, things that I've seen in other headphones do is that when they do double tap, single tap, triple tap, is, I feel like this is mostly when people do single taps or triple taps in their gesture suite, is it has an uh, elevating tone. So it starts at a low tone for one, it does a mid tone for two, and then a highest tone for three. So I think that helps you affirm that you're doing one, two, three, and you know what tone's gonna happen. This one doesn't have that, so the controls are a little bit more ambiguous to me. So I'm still gonna give it to the MW08s um, sports, even though you know some people prefer touch controls. So it's really gonna be up to you, but even from a touch control, control perspective, a bunch of other headphones like the Sennheisers, the Sonys, the Neuraloops, the Neurophones, like a lot of those guys do touches better and in a better affirming method. So has some work to do, um, but you know, you can get used to it if you really, really, really like that. But um, overall, earbuds in case, I'm gonna give it to these guys. Let's uh, see what is next on this part. Fit, fit. So initially, if you guys weren't part of the MW08 reviews, the fit on these were trash. Um, just because of the fact they had only silicone tips and I couldn't, for the life of me, keep them in my ears. They kept slipping out. I couldn't get, I was, I was having trouble just shooting like the binaural microphone, like sticking it in the, the, the fake ears and just letting them stay and not even touching it. It was hard to get those earbuds to stay there. And then when I took them onto the field, it was just like, boom, they fly out of my ear immediately. Um, but uh, that's when the PI5s and the PI7s were just superior. Out of the box, these felt really, really good. Again, there is some concern about long-term listening. I did feel like as, I mean, 
you can't really listen to these that long because they only last four hours. That's something I forgot to mention. Four hours. Four hours. And I was getting more like three and a half per charge. What are we? 2016? Come on. Um, these ones are 12. 10 if you have ANC on, but 12. What the F? Are you serious? Three times heavier than this guy. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Anyway, back to this. Even after long-term listening, I was laughing because I was saying, as these were dying after like the second charge, they kind of hurt my ears. So like they kind of just felt very present and there was some ear fatigue that I was feeling with both the PI5s and the PI7s. Out of the gate, they're really, really comfortable. Again, if you're doing short workouts, I mean, you're going to have to just because battery life again. Um, that is kind of what happens. Um, but again, put them in your ear. They're fine. They'll, they'll, they'll be comfortable for an hour or two, maybe three hours. Um, but you know, after you recharge these and go for like anywhere like four hours, five hours, six hours, it's going to start wearing on you. And um, yeah, it's unfortunate. But on these ones, with the introduction of the foam tips, they don't really, you don't feel, really feel anything. I, I almost feel like these are lighter too. Are these lighter? They're similar. But this one just fit very much because of the, the foam tips that they've included, does fit snugly into the ear and it doesn't have the weight. Because like this one definitely has contact with your ear. It does use that contour to sort of fit there and rest on your ear, while the introduction of foam tips here kind of make it suspended in your ear and stay. I mean, it does have a little bit of contouring in there to make it fit into the curvature of your ear, but it doesn't rest on your ear as heavy as the PI7s do. So long-term comfort, definitely the MW08 Sports, um, as well as even when you talk about um, in the field. So in the field, again, they're very similar. You're not going to be listening to these super long unless you're doing like, an, like a marathon run. Um, but again, these ones are going to last longer and they are arguably more comfortable over time. So these ones, you know, starting out, you're locked in, you feel locked in, you don't have to worry about them, but you're going to feel that sort of uh, expansion in your ear over time. Um, and, you know, they may even benefit themselves from, from foam tips, but out of the gate of what they provide you, I'm going to say MW08s for fit, active fit, idle fit, whatever sort of fit, especially because I, you know, I literally tried that for six to eight hours on my head with phone calls and I never had fatigue issues and I never had slipping out issues and I had none of those issues. Um, and when I was starting to feel that after like a recharge with these guys. So yeah. Um, in terms of microphones, interesting. So these actually perform pretty well both ways. I will say that um, the MW08's got a little more compliments from my clients. So I did use these for multiple weeks um, on the phone with my client, kind of switching days. I think I do like Monday, Wednesday, Friday with these, and I do Tuesday, Thursday, and Sundays with these. Again, I work Sundays sometimes, so I did these and um, definitely got better response in terms of what people got on that side from them. I will say that from, from a phone call perspective of what you're hearing, the PI7s are a little bit better in terms of volume. Like, no, I never had issues hearing somebody, even if I was talking to some more introverted, quiet people. Um, but these ones, you know, I would say they're 10% quieter. So like depending on who I was talking to or what their setup was, I may not be able to hear them as clearly, even with my my uh, volume maxed out. So these ones do better on the receiving side. But in terms of sending, people thought that this was more clear. And especially if I was walking around the city while taking a call, this one did a little bit better about blocking out that ambient noise and making focus onto my voice. Um, while this one still does, it just didn't come out as natural or as clear as the MW08s. But might as well do a recording now. So let's plug one of these guys in. All right. So this is a recording of the PI7s. Uh, to give you guys an understanding, I do have a window open. Nice little breeze coming through just to serve, make me survive this whole ordeal of this Boston weather. But um, yeah, overall, I got a pretty good perception from my coworkers about this. Um, so you guys can tell me how I sound. We will do a recording of the MW08 after this, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, so you guys have to tell me in the comments how this is good. But it should give you a good representation of how you will sound over the phone, whether you're talking to coworkers, friends, family, whomever, um, and see if this kind of meets your needs uh, from a phone call perspective. Uh, and let's move over to the MW08 Sports so you guys can get a good comparison. All right, so this is the microphones off the MW08s. Again, I'm in a room that has a window open uh, and not the most acoustically perfect room, but no one's really home. It's a pretty quiet studio right now, but I did want to make sure that we have a comparison. You guys just heard the PI7s. 
So I want to make sure that you have a good understanding of how these sound like to your ears side by side. And so you understand how people or you will sound to other people, friends, family, coworkers on the other side if you choose to use this for conferencing. Anyway, I'm not sure how these will sound. Um, again, from my feedback from my customers, I've, get, I've gotten preference over the MW08s, but that could change on this recording depending on what you guys tell me. So let me know in the comments, but uh, that should conclude the microphone testing. So I can't really tell. You guys want to tell me what one you like. I personally, each one, either one would work. I'm just going with this one just because my clients gave me props on that one. And that influences me a lot because I'm on there more than with my family, unfortunately. Mm. Okay, what does that say? Walter's handwriting is trash. Ambient. <laughs> it says ambient. Um, ambient sounds. Uh. It's very similar. I would say that the MW08s do a little bit better um, in terms of making it more natural. This one did sound robotic sometimes. Okay, Amazon, you gotta record, ruin my recording, whatever. You are a van, do you actually need to have a, a you are a tiny van. Do you really need a bumper or a, a buzzer or a, whatever that's called, a beeper? Anyway, um, the PI7s um, came in a little bit robotic. So like when I was talking to people, like baristas and things like that, or just hearing people pass by me on the street, their voices did come a little bit more robotic while this was a little bit more natural. So from an ambient perspective, I will give it to them. Um, in terms of this one, I want to say that their ambient noise is a little bit better in terms of being able to dial it in. So this one gives you two options. This one gives you a voice focus or this gives you an awareness focus. So obviously awareness is for just walking around. So you want to hear everything, but voices, maybe if you're working with somebody or if you just want to like you know, noise cancel everything except for when people talk to you. The voice one's option, good option for that one. And I do like the voice option when in an office setting, but overall I usually live in awareness. But for this one, I think with the PI7s, again, PI7s alone for some reason, the PI5s don't have this. PI7s allow you to dial that in. So there's a slider that allows you to bring in, you know, different levels of ambient noise. So I will bring in those samples so you guys can hear that um, in terms of how that sounds. But overall, I will say that, from natural perspective, this one, from a configurability perspective, it's a PI7s. So it really just depends on what you focus on. They both sound pretty good. Um, I would probably f use this in terms of actual daily use just because I think that it brings in noises a little bit better and it has that wind protection that you know doesn't wreck me. But this one never had issues with the wind either despite not having that dedicated feature. Um, but you do get the ability to just kind of you know dial it in how you like. So. Um, it's kind of a tie, but everyday use, I tend to like these ones better from the MW08s. From an ANC perspective, that is the next portion. They are just basically the same. They don't both, neither of them hit like Sony does, so I won't even try to say like one's better than the other. They are both like sort of second tier to me. Um, these ones definitely improved over the non-sports due to the foam tips, um, and it just seemed to be a lot more isolating. Before it was just like I heard everything. I heard everything in the world through the MW08s. I could hear conversations clearly and I'm like I have these earbuds in. How am I hearing you? I know everything about you're talking about about this car you're trying to negotiate. Like why? Um, but I never had those issues with the PI5s or PI7s. However, with the sport version it's improved and it basically brings it on par with the PI7s. Um, you know, active noise cancelling is solid. I will say for both of these. High pitch noises Screech, screeches, horns, um, sirens, high pitch singers, those things will come in regardless. So um, it definitely doesn't hit that top tier. So I think the, the I think that even the, the, what is it? The AirPods Pros or AirPods Pros. And um, obviously the Sony WF-1000 XM4s do better. They're just way better at blocking out all sounds and giving you a little bit more like studio feel of just like, by yourself and i think that's just their king of that their microphones are better and uh well hmm, their microphones are better for anc sony's microphones are trash for fucking talk, hot talking but um in terms of just like using the, those microphones to sap out sound sony and apple i think are still top of class but these ones are, are still commendable again these ones will sound better than both of those so again for me I, I value sound a little bit more than isolation so that's the reason why i would take one of these over maybe the wf 1000 xm4s
but uh, yeah. In turn. In terms of sound, sound is pretty good. Um, I'll make some new samples of some songs so that you guys get an understanding of how these sound side by side, um, just so that it's the same song that you guys can compare against. Um, but obviously, they are both commendable. This one sounds better, more accurate. So the PI7s are more accurate for sure. They're more neutral. So if you are like sort of recording or if you're sort of editing, these will probably give you a better representation of how things, how things sound or will sound to other people. Um, as well as they just have a little bit more capability with a 24-bit sound resolution. So if you have high quality sources, you're plugging this into a computer. Um, again, because you have that retransmission, you can plug this into anything. You can pl plug this into turntables. You can plug into your computer um, where, you can't, where you can get 16 and 24-bit resolution. So anything that you have high, high fidelity sources, you can retransmit with the case. So that's a benefit of sound quality. So that's going to punch better than everything else out there. Um, so it's hard, to, it's hard to compete against this one. However, I will say that to some people that I've had to try these, as well as people in the comments, they said that the sound does sound sort of boring or thin, as some people would say. And I get that. Like, I mean, I don't see that because I do like a neutral sound and I see the value in it in terms of being like accurate representation, really emphasizing what it was mixed in originally, but some people don't like that because it doesn't work out. And again, I could see that if you're using this for everything. Podcasts don't sound as good on these ones. Uh, movies sound all right, um, but you know some of those booms don't hit as well um, as these ones. So I think the reasons why a lot of people like this, or most people that I've heard like this, is it's a more lively sound. It's definitely not neutral. It's a little bit more warm. Um, but it's not like bloated. It's not like a the like what Sony has been putting over the past few years, or like a Skull Candy, where it's just like, you know, there's no mids and it's just all bass. Um, Raycon, same thing. Um, it's balanced. It's still balanced in the sense that mids are present, treble shines well, and for voices, it's amazing. So like again, I think the one I used on my previous one was Sam Smith and Freddie Mercury. They sound freaking amazing on these guys, and like any podcasts, especially people with deeper voices. So like if you watch like True Geordie podcast or if you just watch like even like Teddy Atlas, like their voices just come in a little bit with, with since they have that sort of depth and grime to them and like even age to them for Teddy Atlas, it just sounds a lot more crisp, crisp and clear. So it almost sounds like you're right there with them. So I do like that re representation of voices and that, that translates to movies and things like that, too. So anything spoken word, these are great. And again, any vocally centric sound music will sound great with these guys, but they are boosted a bit in the basses and it's a little bit more warm. So for accuracy sake, they don't punch as well as these and they can't be plugged into other sources for retransmission. So 
you're really based on what quality you can get through your phone or through your Bluetooth source at that point. Um, so they have both have their, their qualities, like statistically and, you know, audiophilely. These will probably be better. Um, but a lot of people will, will prefer the sound signature of these. So let's get into the sound sample so you guys can tell me. So the connection controls for these ones, again, we talked about controls, taps versus physical buttons. The uh, foam tips help these ones become more tactile and responsive. And, you know, it's cool in terms of like how they function. These ones, you have to get used to the tap modules and they don't have great affirmations on those. So I would just say it's this, e this one's easier out of the gate. If you can get used to these, it's okay. Both of these suck, though, in terms of configurations. They both have apps, which suck. I get it. But they both have apps that could easily allow us to configure the controls. I would love to, instead of, you know, having my ANC and um, ANC, ANC and ambient noises being controlled by the rocker, I would rather use that for playback. So like next track and previous track with the volume rockers makes more sense to me rather than having next track and previous track as taps on the play pause button or the call accept button. So. I'd rather remap those and make that more um, logical in my brain, but you know they, they do what they do. And then these ones, you have all the ability to do that. You have single tap, double tap. Why don't you just let me map it? Also, why don't you add a triple tap and a hold? I mean, there's a hold actually, but there's no triple tap, I believe. Um, so why don't you do that? Why don't you just add more gestures and allow us to control it? Literally, just literally, just follow your competitors, both of you guys. Literally, just look at Sony, look at Sennheiser, look at even Nura. <laughs> I mean, they're not perfect either. They still need to add a triple tap and a hold, but yo, you guys, like, you can do better. Like, you have an app, you have all the firmware. Let us control things. I don't know why you guys don't let us do that. It's like the simplest thing. Just like, you already establish mappings, just add an app, like a page in that app that lets us control it. Especially you, Master in Dynamic. Because y'all, y'all do do wild stuff with your app. Like you will put, what is it, like a connection page where it takes me a little bit of time to sync it and it just shows me continue. I have to say continue to actually access the actual page of it. And then from there, there's nothing on that page. I go to the gear to access settings and then I can access my ANC and ambient sound modes. Like why am I go? why am I three clicks just to get to one thing? Like literally that can all just be a dashboard once I connect. 
what is it? What is it? I think the the Technics AZ seventies and Sennheiser even. No, Sennheiser hides it behind a menu. But I think like the Technics is just like once I connect, it's all there, and I can just click it, like just quick access. And Sony to an extent they do use Pages, but I have access to that stuff right up front. So I don't know why you do that. Why do you make me go through hoops just to access my stuff? This one's a little bit better. They do focus on that when you connect. So when you connect, you have those options. They, I just don't like it because there's no other options to do. The only other, only cool, other cool thing is that, again, you can manage your connections, which is kind of cool. It's not as sleek as what Sony has for their over years, not for the. See, Sony, what the hell? <laughs> They have multi-connect on their over ears, but they didn't put it on their earbuds. But anyway, you can manage your connections through the PI7s, which actually makes it better than the Sony earbuds. Um, but then they add something stupid like soundscapes. Dude, just add an EQ. Add an EQ. Add gesture controls. That's why I asked from both of you. EQ, gesture controls. I know you guys think like, oh, we have the best sound. But dude, everyone's ears are different. Let me tune it. What's the problem? Let me tune it. What's the problem? Why are you so scared? We can't break it from a user side. You know, if we were devs in the back end, you know, tweaking things, I get it. We could break it. But we're on the user end. At that point, you went through all the testing, all that blah, blah, blah. It should be resolved at that point, you know? Come on. I know development. It's not that hard. I mean, it's hard. I get it. It's hard to do all this sort of stuff, especially when you add, like, higher quality codecs. So, like, things that you'll see what I've at least noticed from testing these headphones is the more high quality your codecs are, the sometimes it's hard for you to make that fully customizable. Because what was it? Like Nura had to, I think Nura had to use a lower codec so that they could give you that, so that sort of truly customizable feel from the technology they're using. I think it's just a little bit harder or it's harder to implement for certain people. But I think Sennheiser and Sony have done that well. Sony has the benefit of that LDAC being their own sort of thing. Um, but I think using like Aptex HD and Aptex LL codecs, it's harder to introduce that sort of customization with that EQ. So that's why you see a lot of companies using Aptex Adaptive because that one will allow you to play around with the sound signature a little bit more. But again, that's a little bit a little bit of my assumption. That's something that I am doing research on to see if that is actually sort of a technological difficulty. But that's just what I've observed from testing all these earbuds over the past couple months. Um, but I digress. Again, apps suck. Y'all both need to work on it. Do something. Make it more valuable than just giving us ANC and ambient sound modes. Um, customization is always appreciated from everybody. <laughs> I'm not the only one. Um, but what was the other thing? So we did connection now. Oh, and then I guess lastly, which is weird why I put this last, but whatever, I'm dying. I am literally dying. So, uh, I'm just going to let my, my brain go the way it does and talk to you about, so the connectivity of these guys are variable. Well, mostly for this one. So the PI sevens, let's start with that. The PI fives got me 40 yards. Um, so 120 feet, pretty solid. Um, I think that that was great, uh, in, at least in terms of the promise, because again, they were promising 100 feet, uh, which is mostly what these earbuds these days do. Is it's about 100 feet, even though that the like 5.0 Bluetooth promise, or, or like theoretically you can get 800 feet out of it, but in practice these earbuds are getting 100 um, at least. So for the PI fives, I got 120, which is cool. So I got 40 yards, pretty simply. Um, I did not think that I was gonna have an issue with these, um, but I did. So these ones actually came out 10 yards shorter at 30 feet, or sorry, 30 yards, so 90 feet. So that sucks because that's under the promise and it's actually worse than their cheaper brother. Again, $100 cheaper, you'd expect these ones to be better in almost everything. In terms of the MW08s, these ones actually didn't meet the promise at all in terms of the MW08s, the original ones, the Chrome Boys. Um, those ones were getting me 10 yards, so 30 feet, way under the promise of 100 feet. And I couldn't figure out anything. I switched phones. I used my friend's phone. I used. I went to different areas. I was, I was in a freaking open field. There was no brick walls. There was no, conf there was no like sort of interference of any sort of sort. I could only get 10 yards. I couldn't get that far from my phone. I could barely run a route. You know, even when I was just jumping rope, if I got too far, I just strayed from my jumps. I was disconnecting. But the sports, 
not only fix that, but they smash it. So in my review, I show you that I go out 45 yards and I was able to still kind of maintain a connection and throw the ball around. That's, you know, I could run any route I want. I could run a go route, I could do slants, I could do comebacks, whatever. I'm still gonna have connection to my music, which is beautiful. Um, but the thing is 45 yards, 135 feet, that's over the 100 promised. So I don't really have to worry about disconnecting from these for a while. So anything active I do, if I want to step away and go in the other room and grab water, I don't have to worry about bringing my phone. It doesn't have to be attached to my hip everywhere I go. So that's always a beautiful thing. So connectivity and reliability, MW0. It's, and I think that's basically the big things that we need to go over for these two guys. So overall, just, you know, just overall, MW0. It's, the, two, the, the places where this one shines, again, is a very neutral sound, um, you know, ability to plug into higher quality uh, sources, the Bluetooth retransmission, and the app is slightly better. I, I don't really want to even give that a win because both apps are trash, but um, those are the areas that that wins out on. But when you look at like your overall offering, MW08 Sports, man. Battery, really, really good sound, fit, uh, aesthetics, durability and waterproofing, Microphones are pretty solid. Again, they're kind of tied on the microphone front. Um, ANC, ambient noise sounds a little bit more natural, but ANC is pretty much the same. But yeah, like there's just way more to win out on here and less sort of excuses you have to make for getting this one. I mean, the battery life alone, come on, 12 per charge, 30 in the case. You'll never need to charge this thing and it'll be there. I get it, this has great sound, but how, co how cool is sound if I can barely get through an album, right? Like I gotta charge up and then do wanna I can make it through a few albums with 42 hours. <laughs> like I can make it through a portion fractions of a discography for real. So like convenience again. Like I I know a lot of people like statistically everything. This is audio file, audio file, audio file. I get it, guys. But when it comes to like actual use case and being able to use it, that's gonna matter more. It doesn't matter how good this sounds if I can only use it for a little bit. If I can use it all the time and it's reliable and it hits a lot of different things, I can use this all the time. And to all you people that are still hitting me about that audio file stuff, $400 is really expensive for this, especially if it doesn't last that long and it still has deficiencies as true wireless. And again, as we're talking about audio files, is there really a true wireless earbud out there that meets audio files true standards? Like if you're an audiophile, talk to me about that. Because when I know, I know audiophiles and they'd rather spend $400 on an over-ear set than a true wireless set. They would rather spend money on a DAC or an amp that would help their wired headphones get better. They would rather spend $400 on a wired IEMs. If they're talking about wireless, they'd rather buy the Pandas. Those aren't in-ear monitors those are over-ear wireless headphones. So it's hard for me to say like from an audiophile perspective, if they were trying to go for earbuds, like these would be the one they would go to because most of the time they're listening to their music is probably gonna be through other means. And if they wanna use something mobily, they probably would just go for something that is reliable and, and useful and stuff like that. So that's where my sort of gripe with people focusing on how audiophile centric this is. If this had better battery life, I would totally be down. I'd be like, yeah, for sure, go for it. Like, but dude, three and a half hours is sad. That's super sad. That's super sad. The tick pods, like tick pods. I don't know if you guys remember that review back in like a year or two ago. I got the tick pods and those lasted longer. Um, but yeah, so that's just my little gear grind at the end of this video. But uh, yeah, my recommendation is MW08 Sport. Um, if you guys have comments, um, if you'd like to talk more about that audio file thing, let me know in the comments. Uh, definitely would like to learn more about people's preferences. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys like these sort of comparisons. I try to make these, especially after I do a slew of similar products, just so that you guys don't have to like switch between my videos. As, as, as I mentioned before, it's great when you guys look through all the videos because it does help my view time or my watch time and my views. Um, but 
I like making things a little bit more convenient. So hopefully these are helpful. Let me know in the comments. Um, if you guys are new here, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, doing all the things you normally do on a video that you like and love. And to my OGs, again, sorry for some of this informal stuff, but this is how I like doing these comparisons, even though I'm dying. Um, anyway, I don't really know what else to say. Oh, sh I think we hit a thousand. I'm gonna have to figure out what we wanna do. If you guys have thoughts on what you want, in terms of the thousand, whether it's a certain product, I'm not buying something really crazy. Someone asked me to to, to review like a four thousand dollars, like you know, speaker, and I can't do that. I, I am not loaded. I am well off, but I am not loaded. <laughs> um, so we're not doing that. But if you guys have a thought on like what you want to do for a thousand, whether it's like you know, like a little background of why I started this. If you want to know, like want me to go through user comments. If you want me to, yeah, if you want me to review something reasonable, <laughs> let me know. Um, but yeah, throw those in the comments. I can figure out what to do for the thousand. But I do appreciate you guys helping me get to that number. It came up real fast. And I don't know if that's because of the shorts or if that's because of you guys just sharing things a lot or if it's just me posting more, but you guys all together have helped me get here and I am super appreciative of all that sort of exposure and you know engagement that you guys have been i like how our community has been developing i see people helping each other out people commenting to each other and i like that like as much as i like commenting and you know giving my sense my two cents i do like having that sort of like cross collaboration and having people like chime in on their experiences too so when i tell you guys you know like like if like if i helped you make a, a purchase decision and you get it in the mail and i say like yo tell me how it is it's not just because i I, I saying that out of default. No, I actually want you to know. So like, come back to the video, tell me how you feel about it. And uh, yeah, cause I, I like to see if I was accurate and if I actually did help you or if you just think that I finagle bageled you. But uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, thank you guys. As always, appreciate ya. Later.